G'day, I'm Bruce. In this video, I'm going to try and get this 60-year-old Wabco dump truck to drive out of this quarry. This is the truck. This is Wally Wabco. And Wally Wabco is fitted with a V12 two-stroke Detroit diesel, 425 horsepower. Here's the name up here, Wally Wabco. This will be the third video in a series on this truck. In the previous videos, we went through a lot of things and the first thing we did was to unseize the injectors in this truck so it didn't over rev. We've changed out this hydraulic hose down here on the bottom, which is the main hose that's coming from the pump, main pressure hose. And we've also changed this hydraulic hose up here, which is going to the power steering box. Engine's been checked, engine oil's been checked and topped up. Radiator's been checked and topped up. We fixed an issue with a seized idler on the motor. We've had a good look at the brakes. We've had the motor running and we did get the truck to move, but the brakes were stuck hard on. When we did get the motor running, it just would not build up any air pressure at all. We found a fairly major air leak in the air tank and we've had that addressed now. Once we addressed the air leak in the air tank, then we had more air leaks up under the dash. We had an air leak right at, um, right at foot level where that hose goes onto a fitting which is actually welded on the other side of the floor, on the bottom side of the floor, and we had to fix that up with, with like a two-part epoxy to stop that air leak. The gears were seized in reverse, and we've unseized them now. Still pretty stiff, but they do work. It's in the neutral position. We've freed up the throttle and the stopper so they can be worked from inside the cab. When we first checked the transmission, the oil was full and it looked like it was fairly clean, but by the time we drove backwards and forwards a couple of times, and then we rechecked the oil, just mainly checking the level, we could see the oil was quite dirty. So today we're going to drain that transmission oil and try and put some new filters on and some new oil. If we're going to try and drive it down the track here a bit down the road and back and then drive it on the back of a float, we want to know that transmission oil is clean. We don't want to do any damage in there because it's got old oil or moisture in the oil or whatever. Before we left last time, we drained out a 20 litre drum of oil and then we thought, well, we might as well just leave another empty drum underneath it and see how much we could actually let it drain out. So we end up with about another half a 20 litre drum. So we've got one complete drum and a half a 20 litre drum of oil. That's what's come out of it. We'll take that away now and we'll probably drop that off at the oil recycle place. This is the filter assembly here for the transmission, just over here. So I'll give them a clean up. Pretty awkward to get to. The second one's really awkward. I'm going to try and get around underneath it if I can. If I can wrap the rag around it. And whether I can actually fit. Yeah, I might be able to get it. If I can get the rag to go around underneath it. Just going to wire brush around the edge of where the canister goes onto the housing. Uh, it's, easy, it's easier to do now than what it will be after the filter's pulled off. I will probably get compressed air and run around there too. I'd like to get this spotlessly clean. We've got a couple of new filters, but I'm not sure whether they're actually the right ones or not. That means we might have to re use these filters, give them a washout in diesel or something, and then try and put them back in if we if we really have to. There's the fill cap. Pretty awkward place to get at. Might need some big vice grips or stilsons or something to get around its neck. That was pretty lucky, I'd reckon. I reckon that would be very lucky that that came undone. That easy. Get a bit of a wipe around there. There's some something up above there. I'll give that a bit of a wipe too, otherwise, once I take the cap off, all that junk from those whether they are gear cables or hoses, not sure.
I just want to make sure it was loose now because once I take those oil fillers undone around here might be quite oily so I thought I'll do that now rather than later when everything's dripping with oil so that's done another little job try and keep the dirt out of it I'm just going to pull the screen out and I'm pretty sure the screen will be in behind here when I say screen I mean strainer that's normally what they're like on a, on a machine like this is probably metal probably a metal strainer and um, that's a bit of a trap too if you just change the filters up there and there can be a heap of rubbish sitting on the screen down here the transmission can be starving to get oil because it can't get through the screen so this is the first line of protection is the, the mesh screen and then the, then like the filtration is done with, with cartridge filters up the top I've got my rattle gun with me today so it'll make the job a bit easier It's always a good idea to remember which way that went on because we haven't got the gear out here to make a new gasket or we haven't got the new gaskets with us. So we, I've just got to remember that where that's dented underneath there, that's got to go back at the lowest point. I think I'm going to need a screwdriver to prise that off. It does have a little bolt in the middle which probably helps hold the screen to onto the backing plate. somewhere where I can get a toe hold. Maybe around here again where I was. I don't know what sort of glue they use but It's moving, it's very slowly. Maybe it's just a screwdriver slipping. Here we go, patience is the name of the game. What are we going to see? Here we are. For a machine that size, it looks pretty damn good. I've seen a lot worse than that. As you can see, the oil looks like it's got moisture or water in it at some stage. That's a bit unusual. This filter's filtering from the inside out. <laughs> Look at the junk coming out of the inside. <laughs> so here I am looking at the outside of the screen because most things filter from the outside in. The reason they do that, most oil fillers, um, there's more area usually on the outside than what there is on the inside. So that's why they normally suck from the outside in. But it's something that needed doing. Look at that muck. can't actually tell what it is but I don't like the look of it so we'll have to give that a good wash out with some diesel or whatever so you can see some of these things are well worth well worth checking 
especially if you want the machine to last go for a bit longer or you know everything to work properly it's a bit like the one man said on my channel he said if you change the oil in the engine he said that engine will last twice as long yeah i'd agree with that especially with old oil in there but we're not going to change it out here in the field if we can get it back to our place we'll certainly change the oil in the filter if any moisture gets into the system and not being started and circulated the water and everything will always be laying on the bottom so in a case like this you're checking the oil level up at the top so the oil can look quite clean because the oil can settle out over 20 years or whatever the thing would have been sitting to if there's any sludge or anything in there that will go to the bottom the other thing we could have done when we first checked the oil we could have probably taken this bung out i'll just sit that there so it can drain a bit more yeah we probably should have pulled this bung out first up just to see whether there was water laying on the bottom that's another way you can do it but i suppose we're in a bit of a hurry and thought well we'll just push on and see if we can get all these other things working and see if it will go before we start to do things like this because you really don't know what you got what, what you're dealing with until you get the motor running that's usually somewhere to start it's a bit of a weird looking filter i can't get a good look at what's in there but that's probably the bulk of it that's come out there now but that's pretty standard in any of these big transmissions on any of this big machine you will have some sort of a strainer i suppose it's a bit like a bit like car engines diesel engines they always have some sort of a screen strainer usually made of metal in the bottom of the sump or in at the lowest point and uh, that basically just stops the gravel from going through and wrecking the oil pump or more delicate pieces there's bits of all sorts of rubbish in here bits of old gasket and we don't know whether some of that could have come off the inside of rubber hoses it has a couple of big rubber hoses running to the cooler up the front a lot of it i can break it up so i'm not sure what it is but it could be an old the old hose is starting to starting to decay but strainer has certainly done a good job I've got diesel here now so I'm going to pour some diesel through there this is just to start with The next move is to undo this little bolt, a little bolt there and a little bolt here. This assembly will all come apart and it'll make it a lot easier to clean. And I suspect it's got a magnet in the middle there too, which is a really good idea. I'll do it over here if I drop any bits. How's that for some metal? Hunks of rust. There's all sorts of junk sitting on there. But that's a good idea. That is a really good idea. And that catches anything that wears badly, it just goes straight on that magnet and doesn't get recirculated through any pumps or whatever. Now is when I wish I was at home with a gurney I could just blast all that and have it clean in two shakes of a dog's tail that shaft's got three magnets in it I'm going to try and clean the inside if you look inside here this would have been the part on the bottom on the lowest part you will be able to see the bits and pieces of junk in there somehow we've got to try and get rid of them so I'm going to use some brake clean here, run over some brake clean. We need something to make it let go. My toothbrush is um, too short. Right, now we go from that to this. need more air 
Have a look in there now, you can see it's starting to loosen it up. I'll turn it round. The trouble is I'm sort of blowing it from one side to the other, but if we can put some more brake clean on it, <coughs> that'll probably dry it up a bit. Um, while that's pumping back up, I'll go and try pouring some more diesel over it. I know this is already dirty, but I'll pour the bit cleaner stuff off the top. If it's loose now, that'll help get rid of a bit more out of the, out of the filter. Yeah, yeah, it is starting to chase it down. Right then, a bit more air. You can see it's starting to come clean, but it's not perfectly clean. It looks better on the outside than what it does from the inside, but if I can keep hitting it with a bit more compressed air and probably a bit more brake clean. The brake clean might break down that old rubbish, whatever it is. And um, we're just doing the best with what we've got, I'm afraid. The diesel's looking pretty dirty now. So I'll put that in our can and we'll recycle it with the old oil. So I'll just stir up the gravel on the bottom a bit here now. I'm going to try and get the dirt off that end plate but my brush is too short so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to shove this bit of hose on the end here on the old brush that might just give me a little bit more room to be able to get in there and Right, now I can get in there and work that brush. I wonder whether Allison had a special brush for cleaning these things out. Maybe they did back when they made things to last. Right then, it looks like that idea might have worked. How to extend a brush. It's certainly loosened it up. Some more brake clean. It's not perfectly clean, but it's coming cleaner. Well, everything's cleaned up now. We just got to screw that rod back into the center. I've got that nice and clean there now, if you can see down the center. Which I thought was going to be pretty hard to do. That's magnetic there, as you can see. To catch all the metal. Very well made. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to screw that back on. The magnet's that strong. Hmm. 
it's probably meant to have a piece of sponge or something around the outside to keep it away from the metal push it down onto the onto the stud and then tighten it up I'd say there again we need something on here that's a bit bigger and a bit longer I have to be Superman to get that to go over the centre because it's sticking to the edges big time. This was the trick. We had to wrap this rag around up this end with a piece of insulation tape and after much messing around to try and get it centralised so we can get on the end of that bolt because that bolt must be silver soldered in there or something. It will not come undone. I didn't want to snap it off. So this is what we did. We got the point in those pliers and we pulled that back out. So that's the piece we had wrapped around it to try and get it near centre so we could get this bit started. This piece in the, in the middle here has three strong magnets in it. And every time you went to tighten it up, it'd just be, the moment you put it inside, there'd be bang straight on the side of the cage. So that's why we had to put that around it to keep it off the cage. And even that should have been a bit fatter, so it was still quite difficult to get that in there and get it started. This is going to be the next part. You can see how magnetic it is. I can hardly pull that off it. And that will hold the magnet dead center. Magnet's that strong, I can hardly move that. I guess I'll just tighten it up a little bit by a little bit. <coughs> See how it's going to go. I think if the bits fell off, they wouldn't go too far because of the magnet. I know one time I was working on a 30 ton Moxie that my friend Shane owned and um, it was going to have a paint job. So while the hydraulic tank and all these bits and pieces were pulled off it, I said to him, there's no magnets in this machine. He said, what do you reckon? I said, I'll get some speaker magnets drove a chisel in behind them, got the magnets off the back of the speakers and we sat these magnets around inside the 30 tonne moxie inside the hydraulic tank. So as the oil came back in, if there was any bits of metal or anything, bang, it'd go straight on those magnets. So I don't know where that 30 tonne moxie ever ended up, but... Right, that's about the limit for those little tiny bolts. And obviously there's no gasket on here to speak of, but so the gasket must have still been, still been stuck to the thing. Remember we've got our little witness marks here from where it's been driving over rocks in the quarry. That's at the bottom. So we know which way it's going to go back on. And I will try and clean out the rest of the bottom of the transmission. I'm just going to get a rag and try and mop some of that old oil out the bottom of that transmission. All right, here we go. Drag a bit more that soup out. threads here a bit of a clean out. Pretty dirty. I'm just going to put a bit of grease on the gasket and that way it mightn't be stuck on there so hard for the next person to try and pull it off. Look at it now. You can actually see through it all the way. That's got to slide into a hole. I'll put a bit more grease over on this part here. If I put it back in the same place, I hope it'll seal up. 
most times you can get away with the sort of these sort of things even though the textbook would probably say you can't do that that won't be any good we've got two bolts these two bolts here are shorter <coughs> than the rest so you know, just have to see which holes are the same length same length same length same length same length same length doesn't matter it's always a good idea to check how deep the holes are so we know they're the same we can put this back in there now with that down the bottom that's how it was with the dent there some of these were fairly tight so I'm not quite sure which ones were where right, I'll go back to my rattle gun I think I'll just get them all started with a bit of grease by hand they're all going onto a tin plate so anywhere I see tin plates I think well you can over tighten and then buckle the plate and when the plates buckle then it'll probably leak so sometimes it's better just to do these things up by hand you get a better feel over or I do anyway I'm old school you have like that inboard inbuilt tension wrench to get an idea of whether they're all the same modern day people are probably doing that with how many blips they give on the impact gun right that's done there we are not the easiest thing to get started about it oh well we've got our, our diesel and rubbish mix here we'll just tip that into there and go to the recycle and I'll probably turn it back into bright fresh new oil again ready for the ones up the top <coughs> oh yeah <laughs> just pull the exhaust apart so much noise and smoke the exhaust is just sitting there I'm just going to check my bucket is underneath should be in about the right position there I reckon everything's big Feels like it's got a pretty big spring inside there. It's the long threads. But sometimes they've got to be like that because it'll have a big spring in the bottom of the like that. Is it then? They have a big spring on the bottom of the cartridge to push it up so it seals off. Yep.
We're getting close. Right. There you goes my glove. Doesn't matter. One down and one to go. And this one's further away. Yep, went bang. Got my glove again. Look at that. Got my finger that time too. Certainly got moisture in the oil, that's for sure. That would have been the lower side there. See where the sludge in that saddle on the lower side. See how these other, well look at that, it's been that dry, the top half has been dry, it's only gone rusty, it's been sitting there for that many years dry. <laughs> that's on the bottom where the, dirt, where the sludge is. And they, not too bad, but I thought the fillers would have been worse than that. <clears throat> Especially when the stuff that came out the bottom We've got our new filters here now, even though these two did come under different part numbers, but from what we can gather, maybe this one here might have been a hydraulic filter, this one here might have been an engine oil filter, that part probably is the same, but maybe where they go into the housings, that part may have been different, but most importantly, hole diameter is the same, uh, the length is the same, so we're pretty sure they should work. We'll probably change these filters again when we get home. But at the moment, this will give it the best possible chance to be able to drive on that float without any trouble, we hope. Here we go. See if I can get in there. Get that lined up. dirty saw it up so I'll try and put it back the same way it came off if I can jiggle it around a little bit as it's going on getting pretty tight there now That's it, that's the end of the, the end of the line. Right, one to go.
that cardboard is not quite centre. Don't like that. That one's the same. Radio, doesn't matter which way that goes in. Now we're going to put some oil on the end here with some grease. We'll put some grease on that. I'll try and put some oil in here too. Put a bit of grease around on these. Might help them go into position a bit easier. That into there. A bit of grease around the end here. she goes. It's a bit of a hit and miss job here to get started because you can't really can't really see what's going on. Might have been beginner's luck with the other one I think. Oh no, there we are. Feels like about where it was sitting. That's about the easiest part there to move it round. I probably should have checked the other one like that too. Bit of a wriggle to make sure they they're not chewing the seals up when I'm putting them together. Wriggle around, holding up a bit square. And that's it. Let's tighten up that spanner a bit. That's the end of the travel. This is the last of the oil from under the truck. You sit that down, let that drain down. Nice clean oil. Got to give Wally the best chance. This is the second drum, and we reckon we've got about 30 or 40 litres out. So I've got this um, I've got this tap pulled out now that was blocked up with dirt. So that, that will actually show us when the transmission's full. But then of course the torque converter and the hoses and the cool and everything is probably will probably still be empty. So we're going to need more oil than when it says full here. We'll have to whack extra oil in as well, or start it, get the oil circulating, and then turn it off, and then recheck the oil level then which will probably be a fair bit lower. And someone left a message the other day on my channel saying about what sort of oil pump was it. It's a McNaught, made in Australia, McNaught, got written on the side here. Just looking at it now, you just reminded me. This is our oil level tap here. Maybe I'll just clean the dirt out of it. And it's saying there now that it has Got enough oil in it. See, all starting to run out there now, so we'll say. But because it's full there, the torque converter could be half empty, the cooler could be half empty, the filters up above we know they're empty, so we need to put more oil in. It's got to be above full. We'll probably start it and stop it and do another check after the oil's gone into all those different places that would be empty there now. So we'll probably put 40 litres in it and I can't see it will do any harm if it is a little bit above full. So we'll pump the rest of this drum in. Must be nearly 40 litres. Well, 
pump there's 40 litres there's the sort of pump we're using it's a McNaught pump built in Australia I'm just going to check the water again yeah the water's above the cores I have got some more water there I wonder should I pour a bit more in right here we're going to pour some water in Water was above the cores already, but we've got it there, so I suppose we'll put it in. I think I'll just leave that cap loose so it can't build up any pressure. Don't think it can do any harm. Take the lid right off out the way. Righty -o. This will be the third top up with fuel, and it's also had fuel doctor and some two stroke oil as well to try and lubricate everything up there that could be pretty dry. That's about it. Put the big lid back on. Right -o. The start button in the cab doesn't work, so we've got a hot wire here, we'll just hook straight onto the under the relay or the solenoid on the starter motor and go from there. They're all rusted up so we'll never be able to get them. I don't think they'd probably just snap. Might be worse off. There's drawn a bit of current, probably the probably the diodes and the alternator. We're getting pretty close to seeing if this thing's going to really drive now, but we notice there's a crack in this tyre and this tyre is down a bit. So we've got this adapter here. Most of these bigger outfits have got bigger, bigger valve stems on them. So we've got this adapter here to reduce this back. So we're going to see if we can put some more, more air in that tyre, build the pressure up a bit so the, so the crack won't be so strained, I suppose we'll say, when the thing's going round and round. Right over, right, we're going to see where it's going to start.
Well, men must have been tough when they drove things like this. The heat inside the cab, the noise. I don't know how they would have put eight hours in driving something like this with that sort of a noise coming out of it all the time and the heat's just unbelievable. The heat coming up through the floor is really hot to ride in. But yeah, what an experience, eh? Looks like the gears and it worked. We've still got a bit of an oil leak there somewhere and a bit of an air leak, but it was good enough to get down the road. I was very cautious turning around because we have had some rain. I thought if I get off the road here and this thing gets stuck, we're in big trouble. So that's why I had to just raise the blade backwards and forwards until I got turned around to come back the other direction. I'm sure the brakes are releasing now, especially the handbrake. The handbrake um, is like a big drum on the pinion on the back diff and you can hear it, you can basically hear it, you can basically feel it too. Once you've moved that air lever across on the dash, you can feel it sort of just moves a bit. So that's a sign that it's letting go and it is um, building air pressure up to about 100 psi now. That proves that Wally will start and drive and I could drive it back down onto level ground, back down near the gateway so it could be loaded onto a float. I'm really up against it, working out in the field here. So I'll probably say that's it for this video and it's been a terrific adventure getting Wally going again. A lot of people have been asking what the plans are for this truck. Well, if I can get it back to my place, I might be able to do some more work on the brakes and I might be able to make another couple of videos on, on fixing Wally up a bit more. That'll be it for this video. Until next time, thanks very much for watching.